or a modern Egypt, they'll say ancient Egypt, and they dug up a mummy, and they say, well, this mummy is Osiris. You know what they just did? They just removed the myth. They just removed the fact that they were telling you that Osiris was not a real person, but a mythological character of ancient Egyptian pantheists. But now they have a mummy of a man. Now they have to alter the stories to go along with Osiris. Let's start. Because now, I mean, they have done this season. You know, you heard they've done up those times. Now, what stories go along with Osiris that frightened them? One is, Osiris was killed by his brother. And after his death, his wife, Isis, gave birth to a son called Horus while he was dead. If it sounds mythological, it did years ago, but now the scientists have, been, have cracked genetic slicing and taken seeds or cells out of dead people and they're doing it. They got a mammoth elephant, they're doing it to right now. And they're regenerating what appeared to be dead tissue and cloning. You come to the conclusion that just because you didn't know it in your modern laboratories, it didn't mean that the ancient Egyptians didn't know it then. And if you have a better explanation for the fact that Osiris' body is here now, and it's tangible and can be touched, that means when we go back to the ancient Egyptian book of the coming forth by day, or the Egyptian book of the dead, and we start to read about this and find out that book is as old as he is, that means the stories in there are true. As true as the fact that the book was unbelievable, as they would say, before the body was found. And it looks like somebody just wrote these stories about mythological creatures or people. But once the body is found, the book becomes real. And then they have to contend with how did Isis give birth to Horus after Osiris was dead? And you know, it's not there. Because the Caucasian so graciously went into Egypt and grabbed a character who was fictitious to them. His name was what? Thor. Tehuti. Who they call Hermes. They didn't mind borrowing Hermes instead of the Hermetic school of thought, the foundation of Freemasonry. You hear me? And they describe him as a bird, an ibis bird with a long beak. And they call him the scribe who stood there when Kanun shaped each body out of clay on a wheel and gave that body a name and gave that body a ka and a ba, a soul and a spirit. And he recorded it. They call him the master alchemist. They, know he, they call him the secret bell. Then we get to the Bible, the Torah, and we find that God was supposed to have written the law, the Torah, with his finger on the stones of tablets for Moses. And we get the beak of the bird of Tehuti while he stands there proudly with a quill and a pig. And we find out that when we read the story of Osiris and Isis, that this Shahuti was there. That Thoth was there, as it's called. That Hermes was there. That this wise being of wisdom who kept the records of who was born was there. While who? Hanun did what? Shake. The body from the clay. Then we go to the Bible and the Quran and we read. And God shaped man from the clay or the dust of the earth and breathed into man the breath of life. And man became a living, the car and the body again. And the shaping of the body. And it predates the Bible because it's in ancient Egyptian writings. 
that Hanum has a wheel and he takes his clay and he shapes the body and he makes a duplicate of the body called the cop and then gives it a soul. And Tahuti advised him as how to do it and named each creature as they came into the world. Now we go back over to the Isis, Osiris, and Horus story, and we find that Tahuti is there giving Isis advice on how to find the parts of the body of, of Osiris. And they found all the parts of the body except what in Egypt was called the Ba. This is B-A-H Ba, not B-A Ba. The Ba, which is the penis. And Tahuti had to make something for her to use for the process of reproduction. Tahuti's an alchemist. al chem -mis. Kemet. al -chem The Semitic way of saying the Hamites. The Hamites. People of Ham. Well, in Hebrew, Ham or Ham just happens to mean black. Or burnt black. And he's called the alchemist. And Ham has, happens to be the father of Canaan. And Canaan happens to be the father of the white race through a curse, which they tried to lay on us. Because they say, well, blacks came from the curse of Ham. And it worked for years because the Caucasian was too stupid to read the Bible. He took the dumb preacher who just said the curse of Ham. And if you look in the Bible in Genesis, it says the curse is not on Ham, the curse is on Ham's son, Canaan. How did they manage to spend that many years without opening up the Bible and saying, well, uh, do you mean the curse is on Canaan or do you mean Ham? They had to use Ham because Ham meant black and it wouldn't work on Canaan because Canaan means lowlander or low character. It wouldn't work. The whole racist trip wouldn't work the other way around because it didn't apply. So they, they, so they altered words from their places. Or as they say, some of those who are Jebusites altered words from their places. And they say this when it should be this. Let's get back to the science. Now, Tahuti is there to guide Osai, I mean Isis, in the reproduction or the birth process of a son after he's already dead. Tahuti is the head of the mystical order and the priest, the wab, as they call him. He's also an alchemist, a chemist. He took the seed from the cells of Osiris and he implanted Isis and she did what? Became a surrogate mother. Oh, see, 20 years ago, when I said that, they said, no, that's, that's crazy, man, that's impossible. What's so beautiful is our ancient ancestors are proving everybody's religion, everybody's denomination, everybody's faith wrong by facts, by right knowledge. When the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the pig is man-made from grafting it from a rat, cat, and dog, people said, oh, it's not possible. They can't do that. Now they're doing it. Now they're crossbreeding animals and making hybrids that are mixed. So now what was impossible has become possible. Now women are having babies outside the womb. They don't need but one tissue to clone. And they can preserve the sperm cell for years and then reanimate. You follow what I'm saying? So if some scientist 2,000 years ago wanted Christ Jesus born again, and they might have been called the Essenes, who lived up in the Qumran in Jordan, and a loaf from the people down in Jerusalem who are following the, uh, what you call the fundamentals of religion, they were a little more mystical, you hear me? They could have set aside a community.